Michael Swickard here. Welcome to Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Our award-winning Hatch Green and Red Chili is brought to you from locally owned farms in Hatch, New Mexico, which everybody knows is the chili capital of the world. Now, for those of you who have seen the 1993 movie Tombstone, Val Kilmer was an absolute delight in his portrayal of Old West legend Doc Holliday. He has a quote for the day about New Mexico that I think is important. He said, New Mexico is my home. It has never been anything but home. The ranch has rivers and canyons, everything imaginable. I can ride, hunt, and fish. At the same time, ranching is grueling, difficult work. It's like acting. To be successful at it, you have to work hard. I take it very seriously. That's what Val Kilmer said about New Mexico. You know, his grandfather was a gold miner in New Mexico, so he was well acquainted with it. Again, he had a great movie role as Doc Holliday. Now, the real John Henry Doc Holliday, who moved to Las Vegas, New Mexico for a time and hung out his shingle, as they say, open for business as a dentist, well, that was his training. He was also a professional gambler, which was his passion. Doc Holliday saved lawman and gambler Wyatt Earp in Texas, where Wyatt was in jail for selling gold bars, but they were just painted gold. They were actually made out of lead. So Doc and Wyatt went to Las Vegas, New Mexico. Then the New Mexico Territorial Legislature decided to outlaw gambling. So Doc Holliday, along with Wyatt Earp, moved to Prescott, Arizona, and then to their legendary destiny in Tombstone, including the gunfight at the O.K. Corral. couple things some people don't know about Doc Holliday, one-time resident of New Mexico, is he was 5 feet 2 inches tall, a rather small man, but with his pistols it lifted him up. The old saying goes, God created men equal, Colonel Colt made them equal. When he was leaving New Mexico, Doc Holliday mentioned three reasons for leaving the land of enchantment. The least reason was that gambling was made illegal. He could deal with that. There were two other reasons which were connected. Doc Holliday had found the winters very cold there in Las Vegas, New Mexico, which made his third reason so much more important. You see... He had tuberculosis from age 15 on, and he would eventually die of it. So he needed the dry, hot climate of Arizona for his health. Much like Val Kilmer, a decade ago, sold his 6,000-acre New Mexico ranch and has been since then living in Malibu, California, taking care of his throat cancer, which is in remission. He was there to be near the UCLA medical center so kind of both characters had something and it made them move glad that val kelmer was here in new mexico when he was you know new mexico has some unusual names for towns and cities take the one most people know when you mention new mexico albuquerque what an odd name there are no other states with an albuquerque that i know of in the united states it was founded by then New Mexico Governor Francisco Cuevo y Valdez and named in honor of the Viceroy of New Spain. New Spain would be Mexico, with a very long involved name. And he was the 10th Duke of Albuquerque. Notice me put an extra R there, Albuquerque. That was the word then. It had one more R, the 10th Duke of Albuquerque. I could try his name, but I think I won't. <laughs> Fast forward today, it's officially the 19th Duke of Albuquerque, Juan Miguel Osorio y Beltran de Lis. He was born in 1958. He's the 19th Duke of Albuquerque. In 1983, as a caretaker for UNM Professor Emeritus Matt Pierce, I met the 18th Duke of Albuquerque. Matt was a well-known historian, and he has a great book that you can still get it. It's New Mexico Place Names. It gives you a reason why each thing, why was Deming named Deming and that sort of thing. Well, it was the wife of somebody who built the railroad there. Let me tell you some good culinary news. The 2023 Hatch Chili Pepper growing season is in full harvest. 
Therefore, the chili roasting drums are fired up with that wonderful sound and smell of roasted hatch green chili. Do you know that's the official aroma of New Mexico is roasting hatch green chili. Fire roasting gives the chili a wonderful smoky flavor. Michael Swickard here with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, sponsored by the Fresh Chili Company of New Mexico. Hit subscribe to automatically get these podcasts. Fishing is good in New Mexico. It's always good, actually. One of the great places to go is the upper Rio Grande around Taos, New Mexico, which is the epicenter of trout fishing. And many of the streams are fished pretty well, but just remember, if you head up to Taos, you're heading to where the good fishing is. Know this, a fishing license is not required for 18 years of age, uh, no, for 11 years of age or younger. You can get a license online at the New Mexico Game and Fish website. You can do it all on the website. 70 years of age or younger, your fishing license is free. I like free, don't you? Now, there's one more thing. If you do catch a fish, you should, and you decide to have fish for dinner, and you use the Fresh Chili Company products to enhance that flavor, take a picture of it and post it and the recipe on the Fresh Chili Company's Facebook page. You can become famous for your recipe. And I have tried a bunch of those recipes people have posted. A little New Mexico history. In 1540, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado, the Spanish explorer, came to New Mexico described the greatest concern of the local population as the need for water. That hasn't changed a bit, has it? Of course, he was in our area looking for gold and silver. He had numerous small battles here and there. His worst injury, which laid him up for almost a year, was falling off of his horse. I've seen people that got hurt falling off a horse, too. His expedition was considered then and now a failure because he didn't find the seven cities of gold that he had set out to find. So much for rumors, eh? He described the people of New Mexico, and he did that. He talked about what people grew. Well, you know, even now, because water is scarce, irrigated farming remains the most important part of our agriculture, which includes pecans, milk, sorghum, wheat, hay, chili peppers, and onions. I'm going to talk about onions in just a moment. Onions are important. These are all important agricultural products that are shipped that brings money into New Mexico. We also have a strong connection to Washington, D.C. money with military bases forming billions of dollars of revenue for New Mexico. We also have federal forests and federal lands, including the White Sands Missile Range and Test Facility. We're also noted for, let's see, what are we noted for? Oh, yeah, being the chili capital of the world. Yes, we do have the very best chili peppers, and I know because I have them for lunch. One thing is for sure, all chili peppers are not the same. Some have more or less taste heat than others. Some taste a little more sweet or not. Well, the same is true with onions. The New Mexico State University researchers uh, are one of two universities that research different varieties of onions. They do so for taste, ability to resist onion diseases, and all that stuff tied to growing and harvesting the onions. So there's a term that is used, sweet onions. These are onions that are not as strong, not as pungent as other onions on the market. Here in our area, and for sale at the Fresh Chili Company, are sweet onions that are also used in the development of chili and onion sauces. Have I tried that combination? Oh, yes. And it is ever so great when I put it on mashed potatoes. And also I put some on the steaks that I am grilling. Other uses of sweet onions I haven't gotten to yet, but I certainly will. About 10% of the onions grown in our area are sweet in nature, meaning not as strong, which is what some people like. Some people like me, that is. New Mex Sweet is a holding name for several varieties that have high productivity, low pungency, and are disease tolerant as compared to other onions. New Mexico State University research have been working on onions clear back to the days of Fabian Garcia in the 1920s, who started many of the research programs such as chili peppers, pecans, 
onions, alfalfa. There are many competitors to this, and the onions are constantly being evaluated and adjustments made to make them the best for consumers and also the best for commercial operations. Again, the Fresh Chili Company have the fresh New Mex sweet onions for sale, and also we are using these onions in other products, such as a great onion dressing, which will be released shortly. You will be able to enjoy it. Now, when you think you have a long commute to go to work, let me tell you about William Carr Lane. You don't know him? Why, he was the second territorial governor of New Mexico. When he was appointed governor of the territory of New Mexico, he was in St. Louis, where he lived at the time. He was the mayor at the time. The only way to get to St. Louis, his new job, was by covered wagon. This was in 1852, before cars, trains, buses, airplanes... Covered wagon was all he had for 40 days. Doesn't sound all that fast. He did about 20 miles a day. Did it in about 14 hours each day of travel. Was he glad to get to Santa Fe? Oh, you bet. He was a pretty good governor. His predecessor, James Calhoun, was ill much of his tenure, and uh, he didn't do a lot of the work that needed to be done, so that's what... uh, That's what William Carr Lane had to do when he got there, was clean all of that up. Now, since James Calhoun was ill, he said he was going to go take a vacation, but, yes, there is a but in this story, he was feeling so bad. How bad was he feeling? Well, he, James Calhoun, had a coffin made to take with him on his journey back east, just in case. I like that, just in case. And... Sadly, he did die and was buried on the trail. William Carr Lane was the first mayor of St. Louis and the second territorial governor of New Mexico, serving a year and then returning home to his St. Louis. I'm glad he came and he was a New Mexico governor, even if it took 40 days to get here and get this, and 40 days to get home the next year. 80 days in a covered wagon. I think I could do without that. Michael Swickard here with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico. What is coming in this 2023 harvest is a special reserve release of Hatch Green Chili Veritable Big Jim. It's going to be in a 16-ounce jar for sale fairly soon. Veritable means that this product will only be made with Big Jim Chili, which is sweet and has a medium heat level. Big Jim's very popular in New Mexico restaurants and homes, especially popular in my home. In 1975, Big Jim was listed in the Guinness Book of World Records as having the largest chili pots, perfect for chili rellenos. And I'm here to tell you, it is still, it may not be the biggest one in the world, but it is still great to make chili rellenos with. It was developed by chili researcher Dr. Roy Nakayama at New Mexico State University. It's a hybrid of New Mexico chili peppers and a Peruvian pepper, Nakayama, and fellow researcher Jim Lytle combined. Big Jim is named for for that Jim Lytle, who died unexpectedly at that time. Now, I'm going to talk about Dr. Roy Nakayama uh, in a couple days on Wednesday, because on Wednesdays I talk about people who are important to our area. Dr. Roy Nakayama certainly was. One thing that happens when people live in Las Cruces or happen to be in our little slice of paradise, they can come by the Fresh Chili Company's gift shop. It's at 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite D7A in Las Cruces. It's open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. I need to tell you about some new products at the Fresh Chili Company that I find are wonderful. You can go to the gift shop. They have a local honey with hatch red chili, so it's kind of a hot honey. It is absolutely great on biscuits. French fries are ever so much better with the Fresh Chili Company's Hatchup, which is ketchup and hatch red chili. Come browse, and there are many more surprises, and also some frozen surprises that I assure you are wonderful. Again, Monday to Saturday, the Fresh Chili Company gift shop, 1160 El Paseo Road, Suite D7A in Las Cruces, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. This is Michael Swickard with Enchanting Stories of New Mexico, brought to you by the Fresh Chili Company. Thank you for your time today. We will have lots of news and stories about New Mexico on these podcasts. If you have something 
or someone you want me to talk about, write to me, Michael at FreshChiliCo.com. That's Michael at FreshChiliCo.com. Have a great rest of your day. Oh, yes, and eat plenty of that good Hatch Valley chili. Like I always say, some chili is good, more is better. Bye for now.